Hello and welcome to another episode. If you are confused by the headline, you should be. Uh, you can quickly see where people are at on this topic based on the headline that they post um, because there's some gray area in what's going on. I'll give you both angles because uh, those of us outside of the situation do not know everything that's going on. And rather than pouncing and assuming the moral failings of some people we've never met, uh, let's think a little bit more critically. So the primary story that I've seen so far has pointed to a few suggestions for what happened. Uh, even within the same article, uh, it'll be argued that um, that this happened primarily because uh, Tim Neat was a woman of color and that it was primarily retaliation because she questioned the ethics of a tool that Google uses. Uh, so to protect their status quo uh, and resist any disruption, even if it's for the good of humanity, Google jumped at the opportunity to remove an otherwise top-notch leader in the space. Another popular LinkedIn post made a statement that they would have made the same call as Google leadership uh, and said that this, was, uh, that this whole situation primarily occurred um, because Team Neat had become more destructive rather than constructive in her activities, um, in addition to giving an ultimatum to leadership, which proved just too much to continue in a healthy working relationship. So as I've said before, I've held a role on the algorithm fairness team for a couple years at a large data science company. And while Tim Neat wasn't necessarily one of the few household names, uh, it was certainly one that you would come across, uh, both in her public speaking uh, on this topic, as well as some of the research that she's done. Her work is good, and her communications are typically solid and constructive. Uh, she gave no indication that she was an extreme progressive that uh, had moved out of the realm of constructive behavior into the ideas of uh, you know, some destructive mantra of tear down the system. Uh, ultimately, we know that this could lead to a trial, depending on what evidence looks like uh, against her. Um, but overall, the fact that she had sent an email with the ultimatum, uh, that leadership had to comply with a handful of her demands, uh, or else she would resign, uh, that's going to make it pretty tough for her, I would say, from a legal standpoint. Definitely not a legal expert, but um, it'll be interesting to see what develops out of that. Uh, the great thing about capitalism is that if Team Neat was far more valuable uh, than she was costly to the company and its customers, uh, Google will ultimately pay the price for losing her, and another company will gain by uh, having the opportunity to hire her now. So here's some key takeaways for me. Uh, if you just want to consider some ways that maybe we could learn from, from what's going on. First of all, uh, never put yourself in a position where you offer to leave if you don't actually plan to, especially if you're doing work that's going to challenge the company uh, to change ways that are costly. Uh, it's very unwise to give ultimatums against leadership as that tends to create pressure to remove you before uh, divisive thinking spreads. Uh, even when it feels right, it's not professional and it comes across as using your position or situation to essentially hold leadership hostage. And it'll be interesting to see uh, out of all the people who are trying to gain brownie points right now by offering vocal support, how many of those businesses will actually offer uh, Tim Need a position um, and put their money where their mouth is. Hopefully a couple will, but uh, most are probably just using the opportunity to gain easy virtue points with uh, no risk to themselves. Uh, number two, another thing we can learn is that I think we are headed into a damaging feedback loop that will especially hurt women of color. It's something that research from people like Thomas Sowell have discovered that um, when we immediately begin to accuse companies of racism and sexism in a case like this, and then lawsuits start to pop up, women of color and others become a greater liability to hire in the first place because there are greater odds of legal recourse and leadership will be more easily held hostage. Uh, this has historically happened in other countries um, and just throughout history. And so it always ends up making things worse for people, even though it has a positive intent for them. Uh, leaders will think, at least subconsciously, if things go bad with this black female candidate, let's say, uh, will be accused of being racist and sexist. But in the same situation uh, with this white guy who's another candidate, uh, will be in the clear. Uh, I think a lot of people probably won't talk about that, won't ever even admit to themselves that they think that. Um, but it would not surprise me if that ends up being the case. Uh, and in some of that research, it indicated that that does actually become the case. 
So my biggest concern is that reaction to these cases will enforce that kind of bad thinking. Uh, what that ultimately means for you and uh, AI ethics researchers like me is that every challenge you make needs to stick in the realm of constructive ideas and actions uh, and resist that tendency that all idealists are going to have, um, that if you just apply a little bit more force or a little bit more pressure each time, uh, you'll be able to eventually move the whole organization toward these greater ideals or even a utopia. If you see highly unethical or illegal actions, then of course speak up um, with whatever confrontation is necessary to address the, pr the problem. Uh, but otherwise, you don't provide an excuse for leadership to see you as creating division rather than unity with your team. This can be muddied by the fact that politics and media have a lot to gain from pushing division and championing an agenda at all costs. Uh, and so people usually start to feel, especially if you're surrounded by these kinds of voices, um, you start to feel very encouraged to do the same work um, at your workplace. Uh, but businesses quickly fail under division, and so they will avoid it at all costs. And that will ultimately hurt you uh, more than anybody else. Number three, Google and other tech companies are making enemies on both sides of the political aisle. Uh, this is another observation that I've made. Uh, we see cases such as uh, the one of James Damore, um, who's ironically very politically left, but became a lightning rod for conservative backlash against political correctness in the workplace. Um, I don't know where Google is going as a company. Uh, on the one hand, they're, uh, they're so woke that they'll fire even a mild-mannered liberal guy uh, for questioning systemic sexism as a primary, uh, if not only, reason that women are not represented more in tech. Um, and then at the same time, on the other hand, uh, they will jump at the opportunity to accept even a hint of a resignation offer from a leading AI ethics researcher who, at least outwardly, seemed to hold a very realistic uh, set of expectations for implementing algorithm fairness and overall seemed to hold the same ideals that the company espouses to the public. Um, unlike others, uh, I don't tend to jump into these situations and start labeling one person or group as morally superior and the other as ultimately evil. Uh, that kind of thinking, I think, leads to dark places, uh, and, and it's the kind of thinking that we really need to cut out of our uh, society right now. I see no indication that uh, Tim Neat had become a hateful, vengeful person intent to divide and destroy the organization uh, for not changing fast enough. Um, I also don't get any indication right now that Google leadership made the decision out of any racist or sexist motive, uh, especially knowing that the decision would be heavily scrutinized uh, and ultimately hurt the image that they want to project. Uh, my hope is to always learn and grow, um, even in cases like this. So I want to uh, look at what's going on and see uh, what valuable thing can we get out of this. Um, and so uh, when I look at this case, uh, I would encourage others, don't make judgments without a trial. Uh, there likely will be a trial. There will be legal discussion. There will be those kind of things. Try to withhold your judgment um, of who is wicked, who's good, uh, in this situation and what the motives of each person was uh, until it um, until it ultimately unfolds. Uh, because this will ultimately make you distrusting more of the people around you. Uh, the more that you start to assume the intent of a lot of others, uh, the more you're going to start to do that even to the people around you and cause a lot of damage. Instead, we should look at it and say, wow, that team over there just had a big fight and breakup. Um, what can we learn from them to make sure that we don't end up going the same way? I appreciate you coming and uh, getting my take on some big news in data science and AI ethics. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit like and subscribe if you'd like to be notified for future content. Cool. Thank you. Bye.